If you record a podcast in StreamYard or maybe another online system, then you're probably going to want to improve the audio quality when you drop it into your video editor. Now I use Final Cut Pro and I'm going to show you the four effects that I use to improve the audio, the exact settings that I use and the reason that I set them like that. So follow along with me as I edit the audio on my latest podcast. Okay, so we're now into Final Cut Pro um, and I've selected, you can see I've started to cut this one up just because I was um, getting ready to do some edits, but this is how I've edited the audio. So clicking on Josh, who's uh, my guest. Um, the first thing I do actually is just click on vocal isolation, uh, not too high, I'll bring it down to about 40% just to make sure any of these effects that I'm using are just going on to the vocal. But then I've got my, my chain here of the four effects that I use. Now I start off with a de um, and if I click that and open it up, I always take it off default, make sure it's on master smoothing. Um, and the de basically just helps tame some of those sort of s or sh sounds. Um, they're, they're high frequency and they end up being a bit sharp or hissy. Um, you often get it on cheaper mics, um, which sometimes the guests do. Actually, Josh's audio was, was pretty decent to start with, but it always helps. So the settings I use, the the threshold, the minus 3D, um, what this basically means is it kicks in um, if we hit minus 3D, 3DB. Um, so yeah, it, it just I don't have it kicking in at all times, just if those S's get um, too hot. The max resolution uh, reduction, sorry, max reduction uh, controls how much it reduces these sounds. Now this just brings it down 2 dB. So again, I'm trying to keep this fairly natural. I don't want to completely squash people's voices. Um, I'm just looking to give it a little tweak. Um, and the frequency, well, I mean, in fact, this could probably come down a little bit. Anything between sort of 6 and 10 um, kilohertz is, is where those S's live um but li listen to the voice again josh didn't have loads so I've, I've sort of kept that um sort of fairly high but yeah that sort of frequency so the threshold kicks in at minus 3 db the max reduction takes it down 2 db so brings it down and that's the frequency that it works in okay so that's the deessa we then move on to the channel eq now this again um I'm keeping this really simple. I literally add pretty much a high pass filter. So I'm just getting rid of some of the bottom end, which, you know, isn't sort of useful um, in dialogue and it can make things sound a bit muddy. Um, but it also gets rid of any of that background noise that might have been present. So I generally leave everything else flat. Occasionally, I might just bring it up a little bit around sort of the midpoint if, if people's voice needs um, a little bit of a lift. But generally, I sort of leave these flat and I just use it for um, taking off a bit of the low end. So as a high pass filter. Now we get to the good stuff. Now, what does a compressor do? Well, basically, compression just evens out the sound. So it um, brings down some of those high moments, um, yeah, locks in some of the low moments, just brings everything level. I'll, I'll put an image up on the uh, on the screen. This is a um, sort of a large, a, a full waveform. Um, and what we do is we compress it. So it all just sits within a smaller band. So you don't have too many highs, don't have too many lows. Um, and it just means the volume stays fairly steady. Now, again, let's talk through some of these settings. So the... Uh, the threshold here, um, minus 24 dB. Now that sounds quite low. That's not what I'm saying I want my volume at. Um, I'm just saying when it starts to, to work. So it's pretty much working the, the entire time. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, because it isn't trying to make everything loud. This is just where it's starting to, to come in. Um, it's identifying the start of peaks so it can control them. Um, so then we come on to ratio. Um, I've got it on 3.1 over 1. Now, this tells the compressor how much to reduce the volume once it goes past the threshold. So at 3 to 1, um, for every 3 dB above the threshold, um, then it drops it minus 1 dB. So again, just nice and controlled. Um, the Let's drop down to the knee. Um, this controls how gradual the compression kicks in. So one's fairly soft, so it eases in smoothly. Um, so I don't want a sudden shift in volume that would feel unnatural. Um, I want it quite, well, natural, basically. Um, if I look at things like the attack and release, that's sort of how fast the 
um, compressor responds. So again, got these on fairly fast um, because I want things like the volume to recover, especially with the release, to, to recover pretty quickly. You know, there might be a peak, but then after that's gone, I don't want you to still be trying to bring the volume down if, if he's talking slowly again. So, um, yeah, I've got this sort of uh, around 10 um, and this around uh, 10 milliseconds as well. Um, and I think that just, just sort of works. You can always always play. Oh, my screen's sort of playing up a little bit here. Um, the makeup gain, this just helps bring the volume back up. So I want my volume sort of coming up to here. In fact, I don't know if this will play through, but let's have a little go. So you could see this starting to kick in. Um, I could possibly bring this up a little bit. Um, let's have another little look. Okay, so he's peaking a little bit there. So actually, I'm going to bring it back down. Um, I do leave the limiter on. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, with the gain, um, someone get that to change. You can't really see that now. Um, I leave the auto gain. This is auto gain. Um, you can select it to 0 dB, but I like to leave it off and have a bit of manual control over it myself. But I do leave the limiter on. Um, just to pick up anything um, coming through the compressor. Um, so let's have another look at that. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's sitting around this mark, that sort of, you know, between minus three and minus 10, which which I'm happy with. Um, and although I have got a limiter here, I'm sorry, and the threshold is zero, just to make sure nothing goes over that. Um, you know, generally I can look through, but... Um, yeah, it just catches anything that's going too too harsh. So, um, and the the final setting is the limiter here. Um, so I do put a limiter on right at the end. So everything that I've done, even if I've made a bit of a yeah boost too much, then this just helps keep everything in order. It's on the the brick wall um, setting. So. How do I set this up? So this is basically my my final volume guard. You know, if anything spikes too high, the limiter stops it from click uh, clipping. So um, I have my output uh, value at minus um, 0 0.5 um, so that we never hit that digital zero. Yeah, I don't want anything um, going there. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, I leave these all pretty much as they, as they are. Um, and the release again, fairly quick. Um, so that it, it recovers, but basically I just don't want anything, you know, getting up to zero. And and that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe not an expert in this, but I've found these settings really help just bring my levels up so that when um, I've noticed it when listening in the car, when I've done this, I find it's a, an easier listening experience because um, the, the audio is sounding better and it isn't peaking and then dropping low. It just levels it out. So hopefully that was useful.